We are CMW Media. Uh, we're happy to have all of you. You know, we're excited to give this presentation. Basically, um, uh, you're going to have me, our, our CEO. Uh, I am a 10-year Fox journalist, uh, national TV, uh, you know, Fox News Channel journalist. Then I got into cannabis uh, PR. Uh, also joining me to co-present is uh, Ms. Cassie Dowell, who's with you here. Um, she can fill you in. She was the VP of Communications for Revolution um, in, in Chicago. So yeah. let me give you a brief overview on um, CMW Media First. So it was founded in 2014 as the first ever PR firm focused on the legal cannabis industry. Uh, a lot of our work has been we've worked to help legalize CBD in the crucial foreign markets of Brazil, which is obviously a massive foreign market, and we've worked in Mexico, which we'll tell you more about later as well. The tools and campaigns we used for those campaigns were the families and patient stories or anecdotal stories, uh, which we'll break down for you later in the presentation, were crucial to helping us change the perceptions of CBD and now we're working on doing the same for psychedelics and we've already represented two psychedelics companies. So just very briefly, we are a full service PR firm for cannabis and emerging markets. Uh, PR is really our bread and butter, which is media placement. However, we also do digital and creative marketing services as well. And that's just a very brief rundown on us and, and what we do. So most importantly, this is what we wanted to present to all of you about. Um, public relations, investor relations, and psychedelics. And so first we wanted to share with you cannabis and psychedelics and what were our lessons learned. So we have extensive experience in legalizing markets for cannabis and we do this by working with the families in Brazil. Uh, so you can see pictured here, uh, actually, Miss Penny Howard on the, on the green couch. Her Facebook page, and um, make sure you follow this part because it's all storytelling. We're storytellers. And then any questions about this, please ask us in the Q&A. Penny's Facebook page brought CBD to Brazil to Cacciele and Noberto Fisher, found Penny's Facebook page. She was using CBD oil with her daughter with CDKL5 epilepsy, um, Harper Howard. And the Fishers had their daughter, Annie Fisher in Brazil, who also had CDKL5 and started importing CBD to use with their daughter. They got caught with it and had it confiscated and Annie got worse, so they sued the federal government of Brazil and they sued Anvisa, who is Brazil's FDA, and won in 2014. This has led us to where we are now today, where in Brazil, CBD is a medical import. It's covered by their federal government's healthcare program. So their health insurance is now paying for this. Uh, and think about how far we are from that in the United States, uh, which is probably a decade or two, and this is where psychedelics will be going next. Um, we've also done a lot of work in Mexico with a father, Raul Elizalde, who sued the federal government of Mexico, uh, opening up Mexico for CBD imports then in 2016. Um, also pictured here, um, meeting the Howards is little medical cannabis patient, Sadie Higuera who I'm proud to say just turned seven years old. Um, Sadie, we would have lost when she was a year and a half old um, if it weren't for cannabis oil. Um, she has a rare genetic disorder called Schinzel Gideon syndrome. And her father used CBD oil with her for her seizures and she's now seizure free. And I'm privileged to say she now has just turned seven years old this week. She just had her birthday. And I was able to film her first day of school that she had courtesy of cannabis oil, uh, which was a huge deal. And all of this is uh, storytelling. And I can turn the floor back over to Cassie, who can tell you more. For psychedelics companies now, we're entering the same territory where this new industry is, is really where cannabis was about about 10 years ago. And so Cassie can share more with you that 
this is now where, where we need to go and where we need to be is we need to shift the perception and break through the noise. So Cassie, you can kind of share how you've been able to work with psychedelics companies to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I think to that point, being able to tell these stories, anecdotally, there's so much education that still needs to happen within this space. And so really what the news media is craving are thought leaders and people that can answer a lot of complicated questions. Do you know, or can you speak to when you're manufacturing your product or how you make it or what exactly is your goal in creating your product? And then who are the people that are benefiting from it? Um, we do see a lot of veterans groups and advocacy groups coming through right now um, that I think have done a good job telling their story. Um, but that needs to be amplified further. And everything we've done in cannabis, it's like, that times 10 because well you know it was was it 94 96 andrew that california legalized medical cannabis psychedelics yeah, have just gone uh so quickly uh forward in developing what we know now in terms of being publicly traded and things like that which we've represented publicly traded companies in the cannabis space but again it's like all the building blocks that cannabis took years and years to develop are now happening with psychedelics. So it's again about being on the forefront as a thought leader. And what is your company doing that special? And are there people that can give testimonials or are there advocacy groups that you partner with that can help tell your story and what you're trying to accomplish? So it's definitely something important to think about. Yeah, so we're going to see is another wave of these publicly traded psychedelics companies. We're seeing them already, and it's how do they communicate with the marketplace and with their market. And so we'll explain more to you, having done this um, with dozens of cannabis pubcos, uh, our expertise in how you do it um, and how you become an industry leader um, through our tactics. So this takes us to... Addressing psychedelics in a new media age post COVID-19. Obviously we're all dealing with a new new normal that has changed the world. And then, uh, you know, Cass, you can kind of walk us through. So what is public relations for psychedelics? Yeah, I, I mean, right now it goes back to being sensitive to COVID happening. A lot of people are dealing with anxiety and depression and it's a great time to talk about some of the benefits of psychedelics. However, you have to be very careful about making medical claims. Um, and so again, that's just delving into what your product is and how people are using it and going back to testimonials, how people have been successful in using that. Um, right now, I think what we're seeing is that there's not a whole lot of, the publicly traded psychedelic companies aren't really talking about COVID as much. Um, it, there really doesn't seem to be a whole lot of testimonials or anecdotal stories that I think that's an opportunity for companies right now if they want to be more humanistic, if you will, to share. Again, staying clear of medical claims. But, um, you know, I think there's a really big opportunity here for people to be talking about the benefits that psychedelics can produce during this time. And that's really going into PR and getting into the news cycle. Um, what is happening in the news and how do we make ourselves relevant? And this is certainly happening and we have to be able to talk about that. Yes, I agree. I think we all know we are facing a colossal mental health crisis. So there are opportunities here to communicate. The question is how you do it, which we're going to talk you through more. And then as Cassie mentioned, we also uh, talk later on about uh, medical claims and making medical claims and how dangerous that is and how much that needs to be avoided unless it's done very, very correctly. And it's one of the most major issues for cannabis. And then you can see here, we have, there is a serious psychedelic stigma for psychedelics and that we really can't understate. Um, there is a stigma, we know it, and it's larger than the psychedelics industry seems to think or accept right now. Um, you know, just go to Wisconsin or 
rural Texas and try to talk to them about psychedelics as a legitimate mainstream treatment for anything, they'll look at you cross-eyed like you're a, a crazy person. And where things are in the mainstream is tripping is seen as bad. Um, the Really where things are at in terms of mainstream literature and media, we are at one flew over the cuckoo's nest and the electric Kool-Aid acid test. Um, or you could just go to uh, mainstream media like Marge Simpson and tripping and the famous Marge Simpson tripping episode um, for portrayals of what th the mainstream seems psychedelics as. So our overall point is there's a massive stigma just like there is and was for cannabis that needs to change and it's changing people's perceptions and psychedelics are not yet mainstream. They're not accepted and um, right now, um, we don't even think you can advocate for, for at-home use until you really delve into what is safe and, and what's accepted. Um, but going on, talking about what we're going to see with these psychedelics public companies, we do think we saw a model with, um, with cannabis. Um, so... Cassie can walk you through with examples we saw in the cannabis industry. There's basically a lot of mis miscommunication about psychedelics in the media. And then there's going to be these psychedelics companies that experience these major large market caps that we already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So what we also saw when cannabis, um, of course, has been legalized state by state, there was this concept of the man coming in. And so you had smaller groups of people that have been doing this essentially illegally for a long time that are now being pushed out of a more capitalistic approach to uh, producing this product. And we are seeing that a little bit in psychedelics right now. And um, it's an ongoing conversation and again, it's just important to align yourself with what it is your company is trying to achieve and why you're trying to uh, bring this product to the masses so that there's not this conflict of the man versus, you know, so for example, when we talk about market caps here, um, that might be upsetting to some people um, that have been doing this for a long time. So if we can help tell your story and why you're personally involved with your company, I mean, that's what we do. And I, I don't know, Andrew, I have to think more through how I'm going to explain that, but. <laughs> sure. Well, Kim, so we, we have examples of what we're going to see in this psychedelic space already. And the, the best examples for cannabis are the market caps and valuations, and everyone saw this for the last several years. Uh, mm -hmm. It really started when Canada went fully recreationally legal for cannabis. There was an, an ex, a, a bubble that the, the, uh, that formed, and the cannabis right. bubble burst in Q4 of of last year. And so, these companies were Tilray, Aurora Cannabis, and certainly MedMen. Uh, all had these valuations that everybody, you know, saw dollar signs and thought we we're going to go through the roof. Uh, now we've gone through several months of actual financial reporting of their earnings, and these valuations have decreased substantially. The cannabis bubble has burst, and suddenly these companies are down to earth where, you know, Aurora is now trading at a dollar a share or a little bit less, you know, when it had a colossal okay. billion dollar so market. So I think, Andrew, because we have 10 minutes left, we can probably just yep. bullet out some of those details really quick. And then we could go, what's the next slide? Sorry, sorry, okay. that was 10 minutes, in, 10 minutes into the present. I'll do oh, okay. it, and I'll tell you when you're 20 minutes in and 30 minutes in. So keep Got going, it. you're okay. good. Okay, sorry, thank okay. you. All right, we're 10 we have minutes 20 left. minutes, we have 20 minutes left. So 20 minutes. now uh, Cassie can walk you through, really when it starts with public relations, unfortunately we always start here, which is, no one understands what we what the heck we do and what public relations is mm -hmm. yeah um so i'm a former former reporter as well um like andrew and you know that i went in house to communications and so 
I think um, it's all about communication strategy and that's what public relations is. It's not just shooting from the hip, ideally. Um, you really want to work with your PR team to make sure that the messaging is on point, that when they're reaching out to reporters, they're explaining what it is that you want the public to understand about what you're doing. And um, ideally, you're aligned with a PR firm that is passionate the way that you are. You know, you've put so much time and effort into your business. Your PR firm should reflect that in their messaging uh, on your behalf. So. It's a press release calendar, especially if you're planning to go public, but even private companies um, should have some press release plan there. It just helps build credibility. So that's a more formal document, if you will, of information that we put on the wire. Um, but then the pitching, as I call it, is the outreach that we do with reporters day in and day out. Um, and map that out. So when we connect, for example, if we are representing you, we're going to talk through is this the announcement we want to be making this week? And what's the announcement coming next week? And again, we map that out um, for the next few months or so, of course, being understanding that uh, news fluctuates. So that's a big part of what we do. So we have press pitch writing and pitching here. And then the media placement appearances. So again, that's going back to your goals. Um, we always target all outlets. So it's not just radio or uh, print or TV, it's all the above. And podcasts, of course, now, again, living in the COVID age that we're in, virtual uh, conferences have become extremely important along with podcasts. So we are reaching out to these uh, producers, if you will, and making sure people are getting placement there and making sure that you're prepared. So media training is a big part of what we do as well. So we will PR firms should be working with you to make sure that you feel comfortable speaking about your company. We always call it the elevator pitch. So if you're in the elevator, how would you describe your business? Um, you should be able to do that very quickly and confidently. So um, that's a big part of the media training we do. And then that all ties into thought leadership because we want you to be positioned on the front lines of this industry and what makes your business so great. And we have to tell that story, otherwise no one will know. So um, that's my run through on the PR side. Yeah, so as, um, uh, as Cassie mentioned, it's really all about thought leadership um, is, the, is the key term. And um, we accomplish that by making you an industry icon. And um, uh, it's it's a whole practice of all these elements together, and this is just a, like a piece of the puzzle. This isn't even the whole thing. And in the end, media placement is our product, where it's like we get you into Fortune magazine, we get you in you know into CNN, et cetera, and it's a whole enterprise. And this is getting your story told, is what we say. So. Um, this is what we do. And then if you see here, this little girl we just lost, uh, sadly, uh, her name is Charlotte Figgy. Uh, however, she was thankfully able to change the world uh, before we lost her. And that is in the Dr. Sanjay Gupta CNN's Weed and Weed 2 special. So she changed the world at a time when only Colorado and Oregon were, were legal and everyone thought that they were insane. And this CNN uh, Weed and Weed 2 breakthrough TV hit, national documentary, um, made it so that people saw and their perception shifted of the medical debate is, is for real. Um, you know, th there is a medical debate and this, is a, and this is a medicine for children like her. And it was visual. So they told a story where they visually showed that Charlotte was seizing and on CBD oil, she was not. And, and they got that story told in, in a national US brand or outlet, CNN, with a national TV doctor, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And that made it all true. That, that changed the perception to this isn't about reefer madness or dare against drugs or Cheech and Chong. This is a little girl who, who needed her, her medicine. And so that is, is changing perception of this is the actual picture. And these are the actual little children on the courthouse steps of the legislatures who are changing these laws. 
um, to legalize. And there's a reason is it's a, it's a human mission, it's plant-based medicine and it's for real. And, you know, there are children who pharmaceuticals are not helping who, who have to have access to this. And that's when the perception changes is when you get your story told. So our perspective, and Cassie can share more, psychedelics has not had this happen yet, but this is coming and this is the next step of what you do is changing the perception that psychedelics are a medicine. And how? Mm -hmm. So here is our fantastic hit list of all of our work and Cassie can kind of talk you through I have a particularly favorite one here, but this is a great roundup of what we do. This is placement, and this is where a company gets its story told. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can see we, I think any PR firm, we, you know, will show that we work with a lot of mainstream publications as well as trade publications and PR is more important now than ever because you're seeing that in the past, going back to cannabis, it was just trade publications in 2014, 2015 that were covering it. Then we started seeing reporters at Bloomberg, Business Insider, et cetera, that took on cannabis as a beat. And of course, now psychedelics is uh, certainly becoming part of that. So it, you have to be working with people that can help tell your stories. So we have Fortune here, Daily Beast, a few others, um, Green Market Report. I, I think, again, it goes back to just education and the public, along with journalists, are really hungry, hungry excuse me, for information. So it's our job to help put, position you to be the thought leader to give them that education to be quoted and included in these types of pieces. Yeah, and it's preparation. So once you are here, it's crucial that you've invested the months of time so that your message is coming out right. Because we've done both where the message was not the clear crystal ringing of a, of a bell and it, and it fell flat because there wasn't enough presentation. But here you have the results of months and months of preparation, including right here, the Daily Beast uh, just launched the goop of psychedelics. And that's when your message hits and your story is told perfectly. And what's crucial is, yes, that's months and months of preparation before you're going to get there uh, that you need to take. So that takes us to a major element of what we do, which is crisis communications. So this isn't always the most fun part of what we do, but um, your, your brand, your company, uh, if you look at MedMen now, as opposed to the rock star they were a year ago, or you look at uh, Charlotte's Web, who are facing a uh, class action lawsuit over the, over the marketing of CBD, your bad publicity is going to come. And th really, this is a factor of your level of preparedness, of how much you've put in the work to change that message and flip that script back to a, to a positive. And this is a tremendous undertaking and a large amount of what we do and a stressful part of what we do. But it's something that people rely on us on is bad publicity will come. And are you prepared? Um, this could be a whole separate presentation. We could probably teach a college course on this. <laughs> so then uh, Cassie mentioned this earlier, um, avoiding medical claims. So our team is very well versed in what's called compliance training. And this is that your anecdotal stories, the families can tell the media anything. Um, they can tell the family that CBD oil worked for Annie Fisher's seizures. They can tell you that Sadie had a first day of school she never would have had and a seventh birthday. Uh, the company cannot. And this is another aspect that no one in psychedelics seems to quite have gotten their brain, you know, their brains around yet. Uh, meanwhile, it's a very serious one. And if your company is seen to be out there making medical claims, the next step is you will receive an FDA warning letter. 
Um, these warning letters around CBD obviously have been covered extensively and to keep your brand and your company's name off of the list is crucial and something else that we educate and teach and educate our clients to do. Um, th this is a tricky one and requires lots of preparation and training. Mm -hmm. That brings us to this picture of where are psychedelics going to go, which no one seems to know. Um, we're in an interesting crossroads. So we have pharmaceuticals versus recreational legalization, and we don't know right now what's going to happen or what path that we take. Most communication experts seem to be saying they believe a pharmaceutical roadmap is more of what psychedelics are going to be instead of cannabis. Meanwhile, you have a market here where um, yeah, the recreational legalization is, is going to happen as well. And what will that lead to? And what products will that lead to? What education will that lead to? And what, what markets will that lead to as well? And there's a lot of ignorance here of what this is going to look like and what the communication strategy should be in both of these verticals. And for cannabis, we've done both. We've done the biotech marketing and messaging, which is very different from the fully rec legal uh, marketing and messaging of your local grower who's, who's growing down the street and has a, and has a small business and, and, how, and how they communicate with their customers in their market. So this leads you, us to new legal markets and where we are today. Um, right now we know we have Oakland, Denver and Santa Cruz fully rec legal, but we have this on the ballot in over 100 US cities. So 2020 is kind of like the way 2016 was the year of recreational cannabis. Um, now we have over a hundred cities on the ballot. Uh, we have a whole list of these um, and which way are they going to go? How's America going to vote? And then how does this shape public perception, public policy, politics, and how, how long is this dogfight to change this perception and get psychedelics um, fully rec legal? Um, this brings us to our portion on investor relations. And so this is the bread so and we butter. We only have a few minutes left. So okay. Do you want to walk through this or do you want me to, to kind of explain each bullet? Because then we're on our last slide where you conclude. Yeah. No, keep going. I'm just putting that out. So we just got to okay. shorten up the top. Okay. Of yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we're pretty good. So we, we set your PR strategy, which is what your strategy is, how you communicate with your market and your goals, what you want to see. Then investor relations for psychedelics. This is how does your company communicate with the marketplace and with the public markets and prospective shareholders, which we've done for years to, this is really storytelling on a financial level of how are you telling the story of the perceived future value of your company, which is your market cap and your products. What's the marketplace for them and how much that market share are you gonna get based upon your IP and your company's sales and IP. Then there's the heartbeat effect, which is like the soul of what we do, which is your company's steady stream of news, which is your literal heartbeat. And this is for public companies. You need a, a press release out every week or every two weeks. If this heartbeat effect stops, the perception is that your company is stopped and that you're dead. So you need a steady stream of news to continue to update the market for the public perception of your perceived future value. Our other, uh, our other expertise is momentum ahead of a public listing. So we have represented dozens and dozens of these cannabis companies who have been about to go public via RTOs or reverse mergers or obviously an IPO. So this is a long campaign of pre preparation of getting your name out there so that that campaign is successful. So the public company market knows who the heck you are, uh, like a GW Pharmaceuticals, who's the 800 pound gorilla in cannabinoid therapeutics. Well, who is that going to be for psychedelics and why? And all of that is still taking shape. And then obviously setting your goals and reaching your end goal. And then Cassie, finally, this is your slide here. Uh, identifying your target audience. Yeah, um, so I think, 
Yeah, I have to like bullet this out because basically we just want to say during this that it goes back to are you trying to raise funds or I mean right now news. Right. Um I think right now it just goes back to thought leadership. And I need to talk a little bit more about that, I guess, on this slide, because right now no one can sell a product technically. So it's yes, we should share about... our expertise on that of, yeah, like, like, like when and how is your product, what is it coming from? And right now in the United States, the, the answer is from illicit means. And then right. thought leadership is going to mean that you're a respected thought leader out there who can speak with credibility um, this is a campaign around. I think right now most people's target audience is investors. Yes, um, th th that's really the number one. And then the next step is mainstream news, and then the next step is consumer for consumer mm -hmm. products. Um, and yeah, to build that bridge to get us to talking about having products when they're ready and what we have in the works and our IP, and so it's kind of yeah, recircling all those things that you touched on. Yeah. So then, Eric, let us know how much time we have left. Uh, we want to work with you on offering. Um, anyone can email us or you or email us at info at CMW Media here. And we'll send them this presentation along with our other materials and notes on more of what we do and our expertise, which you, know, you can probably see and uh, we can send them more information and this is kind of our call to action of, you know, engage with us and we'll send you more information on, on how we can help, you know, your business and help get started. Yeah. And I think um, maybe we go into a Q and A right after that. Yeah. So okay. Can, you know, do your, give your call to action out and there's a possibility, you know, of a potential follow-up email with an email list. Right. And, okay. Uh, you can write them with a call on that call to action that way and then I'll come back in and say hey thank you everyone for joining our, our great presentation today with Cassandra and, and Andrew um, let's go ahead and open it up for Q&A we had some great questions that uh, you guys asked throughout the throughout the lecture and the presentation and we'll go ahead and uh, pick some of those best one best ones out and then you know um, I think in the background there we'll be pulling out two to three questions that we can focus on. And we will also have some questions based off of what we saw. So thank you. Very much. And then we, uh, in an emergency scenario where people aren't asking questions, which I doubt that will happen, right? But we'll pull, pull some Q&A together just in case. Um, and I will go ahead and read those out. And then either you or Cassie could respond to those, however you, you see fit. Yeah. Can I, in general, treat me kind of like the newsman, CBD, cannabis, legalization expert, and then pr prompt Cassie as your, you've repped psychedelics companies and actually done this. So how do they communicate and you know how, how have you done it? Because she did okay. orthogonal and she did Jackie Stang. So okay. she has that okay. expertise. Yeah, maybe if you wanted to throw, I don't know if that was mentioned in the lecture, I can't remember. No, I've been trying. Orthogonal? I haven't mentioned them right now. Um, I mean, not explicitly. Okay. They're in the slide, but there's a reason I don't really want to. Yeah, we show oh, them. Okay. They're, they're on. They're on the slide, like the group of psychedelics and all the other oh. hits. But right now, yeah, we're not naming I'm, specifics. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm just thinking, like you know, just to give yourself some credibility that yes, you have been working with people in and organizations within the psychedelic space, right? This yeah, a, a quick I'll think more out. about that of how I can frame it in a way that I feel okay. comfortable with and wouldn't, you know, upset anyone. So, okay, perfect. Okay. Um, and then back to the q and I'll basically ask the question. So I'll reread re the question based on what the audience wants. And I'll let you guys determine based on the content of that question, who, who best want, who can answer that. And you guys yeah, probably will know right away, right? Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. I know, we'll, Andrew, yeah. you'll jump in when it makes sense, or I can jump in. Um, yeah, and also, we'll know quickly. There's a chat feature on here. So you and I, I've, I know Eric was chatting us, but you can yeah. chat. So if you want to use that too, Andrew. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at it now. So you got yeah. Yeah, 10 minutes yep. testing chat. So if you're like, you take this one. I mean, I'll know from looking at you if you want me to take yeah. it. Um, and also, um, okay. when we did the poll, we actually did an interactive poll. Did that pop up onto your guys' screen as well? Yeah. Because we want to make sure the panelists aren't distracted by that when you're, you know, when you're actually presenting, right? You don't want that. It showed up out. when yeah. we were talking. 
Okay. So I saw two so we'll, questions, like one at the very beginning, which made sense. And then I saw one pop up while we were talking. Like right now, yeah, I see okay. it. Again. Well, the second was Mark Faros Canvas Next mm -hmm. Steps. Yeah. Okay. And the first, yeah, first was bringing those into it, yeah. Yeah, so oh, we can just X out of those right away, right? Yeah, but we should also be able to, um, I think in our settings, we can actually change that so you don't see it. So it's not distracting to you. And at the end, we can give you all the data that we collect from some of these interactive polls and stuff. It's Very just to cool. add a little spice to the presentation because people are sitting here looking at their computer screens, you know, not that it needs it, but it, we're going to do this for all of our lectures and all of our presentations will have this. So. Yeah, no, I think that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. As um, well, if uh, sorry to interrupt you guys, as well, if there is a question that you would like to have on the poll, uh, maybe something pops into your mind. Uh, yeah, uh, you can suggest something, not a problem. I, but, uh, I like one, Cass, let me know your thoughts. Yeah. I like one on, so Cass and I were discussing this. We're, we're kind of, you know, uh, beating, I'm not beating on the bush on this, but we're, 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 tap, we're tiptoeing around it because this is like a big unknown and a major point of education we're going to have, but who, you know, who's going to be the hero story for psychedelics? Is it going to be like a war veteran with PSD? Is it going to be, you know, a veteran with like phantom limb syndrome? Is it going to be a depression story with like a, you know, a, all really fun topics? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but well, that, that's what we've been, you know, you know. Hopefully it's collective and not, I mean, I know it's fun and it's great, to have, especially in the PR world, that, that one person that you can drive into your media channels and that really takes hold and goes right. viral, right? But hopefully we look at this as like, we're all suffering from COVID-19 and collectively we need help, especially from all of these negative impacts that we're seeing and we will see when it comes to mental health farther on down the road. So it could be a collective thing and then maybe there'll be one, I don't want to call them a scapegoat, but like a dark night, let's say, right? That rides mm -hmm. off into the, the, that we can create a story around. But it's hard to say, you know, to answer your question, Andrew. It's really hard to say. Hopefully yeah, possible. so in the right way, I might, I might like a poll on that. Well, Ursula, let us know how you might want to phrase that. But it's kind of like, who do we think, who's going to be the psychedelics industries? Uh, like, I mean, this is what Cass is like, Star thought Wars. leader, like, like premier thought leader. Is it going to be... A researcher is it going to be a doctor is it going to be a little girl who is is the rallying point of this is plant-based medicine this needs to be legal so yeah. I, I i think a question like that um would be good yeah it's it's definitely interesting uh let me just you know wrap my head around it how we can reward it okay sure yeah. sure and if you want to do a quick follow-up email after this with anything that you guys like on our end and we, um, Ursula and I will wrap our heads, or actually just circle back around and do some reflection on your guys' great presentation. Give some feedback, great. both positive and constructive. I'm sure you probably appreciate both of those, so. Absolutely, um, yeah, and I know, I know I need to do more work on like what bullets I wanna to touch on, so I'm very aware of that, but definitely yeah, welcome. Three I days. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, thank God we got plenty of time. So you guys, will, I, I know everything will be fine. And it was, and even if it was run just the way it was today, that would be great, you know? But if we wanna- That's just you know, really helpful, have, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and then to familiarize with the platform too. I know exactly. we've all been on Zoom, but once you're behind the camera, it's a little different, right? So, yeah, um, no, this is good. So this is great. Um, this is helpful for me. So like I have my homework, but yeah, feel free to share us your input, share with us your input. And then I know Arminda has been in touch with you guys, which is great. So yes. we're- Oh my God, Eric, how say. good were her graphics with like the giant like uh, eyeball, like the psychos eyeball yeah. and then the like, <laughs> 1970s right. like coloring so i mean she's I almost so creative felt like i was high i'm not gonna lie when it was a good feeling it brought yeah. that emotion out of me you know what i mean it's a very <laughs> creative awesome. yeah very creative cool. and uh i thought she did great with it and also to let you guys know we, just in uh, several hours prior to our uh, meeting here we um ursula actually sent an invite link out on eventbrite and we've already i think right before the meeting we had 17 or 18 new tickets just in the last couple hours um, that wow, was, that's, that's a lot more than the last one. Yeah, so we're just, uh, and you know, it's, we're learning here still. So we didn't want to compete with our first lecture, right? And, and confuse yeah. people. So we have to figure out the sweet spot yeah. when it comes to our marketing campaign for this. So apologize to you guys if it's not perfect on the timing, but. 
we're doing our best here. Right? No, it's awesome. We're all learning from each other. So we, yeah. we love it. So I think yeah, it's, it's awesome. great. Yeah. 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 Just right. to be ready. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of interest. I told you even last week among my network. So, I think we're gonna have a lot of people coming. Um, so j just just get ready. I, I think we'll have a lot of interest. And then Eric, if you'll just help us be ready to plug at the end. Like if anyone wants more information, email us at info at cmwmedia dot com. Um, I, we can I, send I think, out a um, so a mass message to all the attendees via chat. Oh, good. Go oh, great. That might be the best way to do that. And then we yeah. can do a, a verbal reminder at the end. So <laughs> says, hey, check your chats. There's links in there for social media, for the web website, and an email address if you want to contact CMW to learn some more information about That's what perfect. they do and how they can help you potentially, right? Exactly. Yeah. And as uh, after the meeting, we can... Um, or after the lecture, we also have the possibility of emailing uh, participants for feedback as well. Yeah, do a little poll or a survey at the end. So yeah, uh, we're happy to have you guys on one of our very first uh, presentations in the series now. So I'm excited, man. This is good stuff. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, well, we, 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 we really do. We have a lot to share. We have a lot of expertise. I mean, it's really is the truth of like, you know, we're the ones that did this of we paved the way for the first ever legal markets for cannabis. We're talking federally legal. Um, in Brazil now, um, you can import CBD with a doctor's prescription um, and their federal government healthcare system is subsidizing the payments. That's so different than what we have in the United States. People don't even realize how far away we are from that. Then they overhauled their laws and they're gonna have CBD cannabis products on pharmacy shelves by October. So, yes, this is a market where hemp products were completely illegal five years ago. So it's a, yeah, a complete yeah. world changing, yeah. market changing thing. And, you know, now, yes, we're looking to do the same thing for psychedelics, but it's, it's what we're trying to teach everybody of this is storytelling and you need to get your story told for it to be accepted. Um, yeah. uh, yes, and it's cool. all perception. The families and your cast of characters and the children are key, as are your credible thought leader experts. Like when, when Cassie says thought leadership, she's trying to tell you, look, you need to be like Dr. Ethan Russo of, of psychedelics. You need to be that respected. You need to have served on the right boards. You need to have published the right research. And um, yeah, once right now you're... we have some names out there that are like that too, like Robin Carhart Harris and Roland Griffith. Yeah. Those are act people that are actively researching the community and bringing us all of this great information that we can now do something with, build businesses around, market, you know, help people right. with. There's so many, yeah. So those names are out there. If you want to throw those into the lecture, it might ring a bell with the audience. You know, Let's that's a good, that's good feedback. Yeah. 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 So Andrew, I think you and I could do a little more like note brainstorming together just of like yeah not to say name dropping but a little name dropping of, yeah you know. and then just remember the audience like yeah i love that you guys are presenting us with this awesome amazing service that you have and these people are here because they're interested in psychedelics and how your company is bridging that gap in, in the yeah. pr and the i investor mm -hmm. relation world right so that's what that's a, there's that cross section of audience interests in psychedelics pr and investment and then what you are providing as a company and helping educate that on yeah if that makes, does that make sense no yeah. it totally does yeah. yeah so i think yeah we can do that for sure we'll okay great right. okay well right, um we gotta i gotta hop off because i have another call here in a second yep. but um yeah i got send a call. Us some yeah, send us some polls or some, some Q and A's that you'd want us to throw into that poll, or questions you want to throw in the poll if you if you like, and we will send you guys the feedback here shortly, and then um, we'll just smoothly sail into Friday. We'll do it. Great, okay. As well nice. for me, it's a great event. <laughs> just yeah, for me, you. one technical thing. Um, please, guys, yeah. just be aware of the microphones because I know during the lecture it's very difficult to remember, but. Uh, mm. I could we got some, some new headsets for y'all. You made me notice. So we're I, like, I, I can are, see. It special. looks good. It looks professional. But you have to be aware not when you're touching your face, not to touch the microphone because that goes straight to the ears of uh, of the attendees. 
Okay. And if that happens, we could mute for. We, I think we can mute for a quick second if we have to, too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can always, that. I can always mute in case there's too much noise. So that's I'm good. Gonna... I touch my face yeah. a lot, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> so if it's you, if, if you see yourself mute, mute. yeah, if you're gonna see yourself mute, it's just because you're making too much noise. Yeah. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, guys. Well, All we'll right. let you go, and I'll look for those follow-up emails. And um, same for you. And uh, yeah, we'll chat. If you guys need anything, just let us know. Perfect. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. Okay. See yeah, we'll reach out to you so before much. Friday. Let's have a great smooth presentation. Noon Pacific Friday. Yep. Noon Pacific. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.